Coming to you from Studios 1162, Vantage Point starts right now. My name is Teresa Scribner, or students call me Scribs, but I'm the advisor for Cleveland Publications. I've been running CPUB for about nine years now, and it's definitely the hardest job I've ever had. What am I doing with my life? I have a really bad habit of running late in the morning, mainly because I'm always at school really late the night before. But my team of editors keeps things running smoothly. Hey, y'all. Uh... Unfortunately, my editor in chief also suffers from the tardy bug, so we do what we can. Again. And I'm Andrew Cornell, and we are your Uber content managers. Right now, we're looking at proofs and making corrections before we send it back to the company for final print. My name is Tina Dang, and I'm the editor-in-chief of Cleveland Publications. I'm actually leading the production class, and the production class basically like produces everything um, visual for CPUB. So we do all the um, photos, we record all the videos, we edit the videos. And you know we design stuff too, so it's basically everything visual. Um, in the past, we've been working on the yearbook, like that was our main focus, and that took so much of our time. But everything is going pretty good; it's organized now. But um, you know, even then, our hard work pays off, and it's a really fun class. Photo team, they take forever. Like I can't get my work done because they take they take like two weeks, and they don't get it done until the last two days. Now we look like illustration team, always sitting around. Like it can't be that hard, right? Just push, pushing a button. Like, it's just, beep, that's it. Okay, I need three photographers who can cover the sports banquet next Wednesday. Okay, and what about the new cheerleader tryouts? And what about the new sports rules? Anybody else? He covers everything. Has Trujillo improved? Yeah, his photos have gotten much better. But that's what I would expect from someone who volunteers to cover events four days a week. I want to be taking all these pictures, but it's hard to when the writing team takes so long to turn into notes. My, okay. My name is Jay Kent. I'm the content manager for the newspaper. I run the budget meetings and assign the stories that everyone does. This is a, this is a pretty fun class. We have a lot of discussions. We, uh, we write. It's a writing class. We write. What are we turning the notes? Uh, put them on the Google Drive in the um, interview notes folder. Mark June. So we put the interview notes in the folder that's Mark June. She literally just said that. Uh, okay, so we're at the end of the year. Everybody should be working on CPUB stuff, <laughs> <laughs> not review terms. Uh, who is thinking about coming back next year? Okay. I'm really worried about what's going to happen with the staff next year. Um, I'm not sure who's coming back. Heck, I don't even know if I'm coming back. 
He did it. He did it. Okay. Oh, you were the whole thing. Get off the phone! I'm so used to telling kids to get off their phones that I forgot they actually use them for recording interviews. Are you filming? Oh. Yeah, me and Andrew have gotten pretty close. Um, and we're always kind of hungry, so sharing food has definitely uh, made our friendship stronger. Um, Good journalism makes you hungry. Molly says we're close. She literally takes my lunch every single day. So the production team keeps complaining about how we don't turn our stuff in on time, but it's been hard to focus on the newspaper because the leadership team is focusing on this weird episode of Vantage Point or something like that. Playing Monopoly, it's for the newspaper. Who can I play? No, we're good. We already have a game going. Team does is they're in charge of setting a production schedule and making sure everyone's on task and doing what they need to be doing. And right now we're um, doing research for the upcoming newspaper. Research. I mean, I'm here late a lot of times, sometimes till 10, 11 o'clock, but that's what it takes when you're trying to run an award winning journalism program. The CPUB, we're all gas and no brakes. Right now. Hello Eagles, and welcome to Vantage Point, where we see you. I'm Tina Dang. And I'm Kazia Cook. C-Pub is all gas and no brakes. Yep. Anyone who wants to join this magical organization should speak to C-Pub advisor Teresa Scribner in room 1162. Now here's the latest news. Cleveland will be experiencing one of its largest turnovers in four years, with nearly a dozen teachers and staff members leaving. Here's Molly House with more on the story. It's the math department that will take the biggest hit, with three teachers leaving for jobs outside of Cleveland. But administrators are confident they found some solid replacements. Kate Byers Jensen, along with Laura Hollingsworth and Melissa Komnick, are all leaving the math department. Hollingsworth is headed to the University of Washington in Bothell, and Komnick is expecting her second child. Byrus Jensen has been at Cleveland for 10 years and is a favorite among students. She'll be taking on a role as a mentor teacher for the district. I'm going to be a star mentor, um, which means that I'll be working with math and science high school teachers um, in a lot of different schools. And I'll be missing the people here the most. Uh, it's been a really amazing place. After implementing some significant changes to the athletics department, director Chris Bryant is leaving after one year to return to Walla Walla. I'm heading back to kind of where I've been for the past decade to Walla Walla. My wife got a vice principal job over there. Don Lamance, who works as a liaison for the College Success Foundation for Cleveland, is leaving to advance her career. She'll be working as a high school counseling intern. I'm definitely going to miss the students um, and their fun and energetic spirit. Um, and I'm definitely going to miss the staff that I became really close with over the five, last five years. The full list of who's leaving can be found in the next edition of the journal, which is out on June 12th. I'm Molly House, reporting for Vantage Point. Back to the studio. Cleveland is mourning the loss of beloved faculty member Alana Farrar, who passed away suddenly on May 11th at the age of 71. Farrar served as Cleveland's fiscal secretary for over 15 years before retiring in 2016, but she remained a part of the CHS family by working as a secretarial substitute in the main office. She will be greatly missed. All Seattle Public Schools high school libraries are now a place where students can register to vote. Librarian Lee Micklin is collaborating both with hashtag I'm18 before November 6th in Washington Bus to get eligible students signed up. Students can also register online at the Washington Secretary of State's website. Acceptable forms of ID are Washington State driver's license or permit or state identification card. The cheerleaders selected 25 members to be part of the 2018-19 squad. Trials ran from May 7th to 11th, and candidates used that week to learn different dance motions, kicks and jumps, along with new cheers. Assistant coach Ariel Torrey said she was excited to make Cleveland a standout school in the district. We're just 
a bunch of different personalities that come together as one and we're like, we're almost like Power Rangers. So it's like, we're all individuals, we all have these great powers and everything and we can come together as one and make a big, huge squad and make a big presentation to where it's like, oh my gosh, who's that? Whose team is this? Where did they come from? And we're just, we bring it every time, we bring it. The new squad will attend camp over the summer in preparation for the upcoming year. We've got a lot of information for seniors, so hang tight. First, SEPA was working hard to make a special senior edition of the newspaper, but that can't happen without your senior portraits. They'll accept photos until Sunday, June 10th. This is your final chance to make the cut. Also, seniors who are being recognized at the honors reception on June 13th need to RSVP by June 11th. Sign up at honeyurl.com slash 2018 CHS Elite Eagles. Monday, June 18th is Senior Checkout Day. Students must have all teachers sign off on their final grade and all fines must be paid before any counselor will clear them for graduation. Students are not to interrupt classes to get signatures from teachers. Payment for fines should be directed to Fiscal Secretary Trina Clark and must be cash or money orders only. And finally, graduation rehearsal will take place on Wednesday, June 20th at 10 a.m. at Memorial Stadium. No bus will be provided, so seniors must have their own transportation. The graduation ceremony will begin at 5 p.m. and seniors are responsible for getting themselves to the stadium by 4 p.m. Seniors should be in their cap and gowns as they enter the stadium. A class photo will be taken at 4.45 p.m. on the stadium bleachers before seniors line up for commencement. This is it. Cleveland Publications is down to its last yearbooks. Order yours before they are all gone in room 1162. Remember, if you still have a balance due on your yearbook, you will not be able to pick it up until you paid it off. The last day is almost here. There are only 10 days left to school. We will dismiss one hour early on Friday, June 22nd. Enjoy your summer. Now here's Andrew Cornell with some Cleveland trivia. What's up Eagles? It is time to hatch our final nest egg of the year. We will hit you with some Cleveland trivia and test your knowledge about the school. I'll give you a question and I'll come back later in the broadcast to give you the answer. Here it comes. ASB president is one of the highest positions in our student government. Their job is to lead the student body, organize fundraisers and school functions. Can you hatch this nest egg? Next year's ASB president is Angel Corpus. But when was the last time CHS had a female ASB president? Here's a hint. You may have been in kindergarten. Now here's Brandon Teeny with the weather. How's it looking out there, Teeny? Thanks, Andrew. The school year is coming to an end, and it's time to enjoy the summer. The warm weather we've had this spring should continue into the next few weeks, so be sure to enjoy the sun. We don't get this type of weather very often, so enjoy it while you can. Now here's Andrew with the answer to your nest egg. It has been nearly 10 years since CHS had a female ASB president. To put that in perspective, Building 2 didn't exist, and Mr. Pratt was in his first year of teaching at Cleveland. Kudos to Angel Corpus for breaking that streak. Eckelberg and welcome to Squaw. See, you thought I was gonna go high. No, 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 no. The uniforms are turned in and the cleats are back on the shelf, but there is still some celebrating to do. Cleveland held an all sports banquet to honor student athletes and their accomplishments this year. Who took home the hardware? Let's see who squad their way to the top. After churning out some major upsets on the road to a Metro League championship title, it came as no surprise that the Lady Eagles were named Team of the Year at Cleveland's first annual Talent Awards. While CHS athletes were the honorees, it was Seattle Seahawks Tedrick Thompson, Marcus Smith, and Dion Jordan who got the crowd excited. Before awards were handed out, the players surprised the Eagles football team in a private meeting to offer some words of encouragement. And I think uh, the coach has, has done a wonderful job uh, with you guys, trying to prepare you guys um, to be able to be, to be ready. This is a place where I can come and be not only be myself, but I can be around people that 
love the game just as much as you do. When the Seahawks took the stage along with two Seagulls and mascots Blitz and Boom, they presented the football team with an oversized check for new equipment. The donations didn't stop there. The school also received 250 cases of healthy snacks and $3,000 in gift cards from Safeway to feed all Cleveland athletes and to provide meals on game days. For the awards, CJ Ellaby and Dominique Bungai were named Male and Female Athlete of the Year. Jalil Breland was selected by unanimous vote as Athlete of the Year, while Ruth Mulgetta was bestowed the honor of Most Valuable Eagle for her work both on and off the playing field. A complete list of winners can be found in next week's edition of the journal. Stop, stop, thank you, hold the applause, hold the applause. Oh my gosh. Scribs, who organized the event, says she wants to make the Talent Awards a yearly show. So athletes need to go even harder if they want to take home the prize next year. This is Wen Eckelberg, back to the studio. That's it for our final episode of the year. But before you go, we want to give a shout out to our amazing video team for the work they put in this year to make this show possible. Until next time, I'm Kazia Cook. And I'm Tina Dang, signing off for the last time. It's been a pleasure bringing you the news for the last two years. So remember, stay fly, Eagles. And keep soaring on. Until next year, I'm Kazia Cook. I'm sorry. I forgot to hear another line. I forgot to hear another line.